That means our ability to think critically and make decisions on our own, to, to be independent, has got to be on the top of every one of our lists. I mean, especially as we get older, uh, because we know as we get older, our brain function has a tendency to decline, and with it, those critical thinking skills. We want to remain independent, but as that brain function declines, we become more susceptible to diseases like dementia and Alzheimer's. There are many reasons for this, and one of them is simply that it's age-related. But a big part of it is the choices that we make. What if I told you that just a 10-minute walk, vigorous walk, three times a week, could reduce your chances of developing dementia by 30%? And what if I said going out and riding your bike or a really vigorous cycling workout could have an even bigger impact? I recently had a close relative uh, for the last eight years of their life battle with dementia. And while it did have the impact of kind of bringing the family closer together to help deal with this issue, it is not something that any of us want to go through, particularly the individual that develops dementia. And I'll be honest, it really got me thinking deeply about what I could do to help prevent this from happening to me. So when I saw this play out, I decided that I wanted to do everything I could to learn about this disease and learn about what I could do to prevent it. That's what set me on this learning path, and it's what brought me to the work of Dr. Wendy Suzuki. Honestly, she really changed the way I think about my rides. So in this video, I want to share with you the three most important things I learned from her work. One is, what is actually happening to our brain when we ride that bike? Two, how can we, as we age, actually build a better brain? And three, and this one I love, why every drop of sweat really does count. But first, Dr. Suzuki points out two very important parts of our brain. The first part is this frontal part, you've probably heard of these, and that's your prefrontal cortex. That's really the decision-making part of our brain. And then uh, what's here is our temporal lobes, which I guess has the hippocampus in it. And that is really where our long-term memory is stored. And these are two parts of the brain that are really vulnerable to aging, and they're very important to us as a human being. Now, have you ever noticed that when you start to exercise, and I notice this when I go on a bike ride, particularly when I'm riding hard, right at about that 20 to 30 minute mark, things really start to change. You all of a sudden, things become clear to you. Your brain is firing. Uh, it's a really important time for me. I know the exact point on the trail that this happens, mainly because a lot of times I stop and I jot down notes. It's like a fog lifts, the light comes on, and all of a sudden solutions appear. It's just magical. It does require for me to experience this I'm working a little bit hard, and so I've always kind of attributed it to that clarity of mind that comes from our struggling to breathe. But Dr. Suzuki actually explains a real neurological reason for this. There are neurochemicals involved in this process. According to her, because of this exercise, because of what you're doing to your body, uh, your brain releases a bunch of chemicals. I'll list them here. We've talked about them before, probably familiar to you, but the combination of these are what she calls a neurochemical bubble bath for our brain. It's an immediate effect that supercharges our brain and gets it working better. And it lasts for hours. In fact, it's so profound that she says, number one, exercise in the morning. Number two, if you've got an important meeting or maybe an interview, maybe do this exercise right before that because your brain is going to be working at its best. So it's not just our imagination or, in my case, me thinking that it's just me breathing hard. It's a real neurological and physiological thing that's happening to our body. I think that's why, for me, cycling is so addictive, at least one of the reasons. But there's more to this because it has long-term effects. Dr. Suzuki did a talk uh, that was titled The Shocking Link Between Exercise and Dementia, and I'll put a link to that in the description. It turns out when you ride consistently, constantly, over a period of time, your brain produces something called BDNF. 
Uh, BDNF is something scientists kind of refer to as miracle grow for the brain. It actually is something that helps us grow brain cells. In fact, it is one of the most effective things we can do to help grow brain cells. Now, this hasn't always been well understood. It wasn't too long ago that they felt like we lost brain cells and we never got, gained them back as we aged. This is a new discovery. BDNF is so powerful. It's not just helping you grow brain cells, but it's helping with the interconnections. It's helping with the networks, the communication networks within our brain, what they call our synapses. Now, more brain cells are important. And you may be thinking, I'm already smart enough. Not what I'm thinking, but um, definitely more brain cells are important. But as we age, it become even more important. So what they say is most important is to build up as much as you can while you can. They call it cognitive reserve. And essentially, it's building up the brain cells, and not just the brain cells and the networks, but brain and the knowledge as well. Of course, just building brain cells is not enough. We do need to learn, we do need to read, we do need to study, uh, we need to do things that challenge our brain. And here's more good news. When you're out there cycling, particularly you're moving along fast, maybe on a trail or you're just navigating somewhere, you're really putting that brain to the test. Those split second decisions that you're making on the trail are, especially when your brain is fired up and building at that moment, are really important and they've said, Doing this activity and learning at the same time, I don't suggest listening to a podcast or a YouTube video while you're uh, cycling, but all of the activity and decision-making you're making on the bike is going towards helping not only grow the brain, but um, make that brain function better. And the third important thing I learned was one of my favorites. And this I, I learned while I was listening to a talk that Dr. Suzuki was, was giving about a time she was doing a second study. So most of her studies have focused on sedentary individuals, and we see a lot of studies that are, that are performed on individuals who don't exercise. And they put them through exercise, and they see the improvement. So she said to herself, what if I took those same participants, and this was at a particular uh, cycling studio or health, health club that she went to, and I put them through, put those, those students, those cycling, um, those active participants and others through another test. And let's see what happens when they do more. So they gave them a, a membership that allowed them to do as much training as they could, and they monitored all of them. And what that did for them was that gave them a spectrum of people. That gave them people who had continued to just stay at the three days per week, which was doing great for them. And it gave them people who decided to go every day and everything in between. And here's the magic. What they found was no matter how much you exercised, the more you exercised, the more it helped. And that's where she came up with the term, every drop of sweat counts. And I love it. Every time you're out there, you're riding that bike, you're putting in a little extra effort, you're getting something out of it. And it doesn't matter what you did yesterday, or what you did last week every drop of sweat counts. Now, cycling every day is easy to say, it's harder to do, so check out my video on, on motivating yourself. Uh, also, you wanna add to your cycling, so check out the one about uh, strength training. The takeaway from this lesson and from Dr. Suzuki is pretty simple for me. Every drop of sweat counts. So if you're cycling in a studio three days a week or you're cycling every day, uh, it all helps not just our body, but our brain. Please subscribe, share this video with anybody that you think could get help from it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Give it a thumbs up, that really helps get the video out there. And I love hearing from you, I love the conversation. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.